We're sisters, best friends, and authors on a mission to help you stoke your creative fire and live the life of your dreams. We believe that purpose fuels passion and that creativity is your secret weapon for mass construction. There's never been a better time to bless the world with your dream realized. You're listening to The Kate and Abby Show. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Kate and Abby Show. Today, we are continuing our Preptober series, and we're talking about how to write a fast and efficient first draft without rushing. So how to write fast without rushing. Is this possible? I believe it is possible, and Kate believes it is possible, and we are here today to kind of reverse engineer this idea of writing fast. So what if instead of taking the approach of rush, 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 and hurry up and write your first draft and keep writing forward, don't look back, I've never really liked that style of writing. It has never really resonated with me. It's never been very much fun for me as a writer to write my first draft like that. I have found so much more value in sort of reverse engineering, looking at what is my natural state of flow when I am naturally writing the fastest and I'm actually enjoying it and I'm feeling really creative and inspired and how can I create an environment around me, a creative environment that naturally makes that state of flow happen, more likely to make that state of flow happen. So we're going to talk about that today in this episode. If you ever feel like you have to rush your, your, the writing of your first draft and you don't like that feeling of rushing, this episode is for you because I think you'll get a lot out of this one. So we're going to get into it in just a minute. But first, we have to thank our sponsors who are you guys. You are the ones who support this show and keep it going. We couldn't do it without you. So thank you so much. And if you get value out of this podcast, go to patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show and help us keep it alive and free of interruptions. So let's get into it. Writing fast without rushing has kind of been like a idea that I've been unpacking and exploring for a couple years now. The first time I did NaNoWriMo, as I talked about in a previous episode, I think it might have been the last episode of this podcast. Um, the very first time I did NaNoWriMo, I was rushing a lot, trying to get the words in every day, trying to beat my personal best word count or whatever. And it was a very creatively stifling way to write for me personally. Since then, I have done NaNoWriMo pretty much every year, and I have discovered new ways to write efficient, fast first drafts without pushing myself to the limits and beyond my limits. Um, we've talked about this before in previous episodes of the, of the podcast with pushing yourself beyond your creative limits and reaching this place of burnout, which is, as we all know, not a creative place to be. <laughs> it's not going to inspire you to be burnt out. And if you can cultivate a better creative practice that encourages a state of flow rather than a state of panic, you will find that your writing only shines even more as a result. Um, so there are a few ways that I've discovered um, work personally for me to unlock this state of flow and create a creative mental environment where I'm more likely to find myself in flow, in creative flow. Um, and one of those major, major things is eliminating distractions, which we've talked about in a lot of episodes about um, digital minimalism and eliminating things like social media and just things throughout your day that can distract you, your phone, the internet, YouTube. Um, if it's not specifically helping you with the task at hand, then it is distracting you mentally from the task at hand. Right. You know, for sure. Yeah. Figuring out what those things are that, okay, that's a big time suck. Yeah. What are those things that are sucking away your time and identify what those are? And for a lot of people, it is definitely social media, the internet, getting distracted on the internet. And there are ways that you can limit that. Even if you're not putting your phone in a drawer, there's things that uh, can help you have downtime with the internet. There's, I think that's actually an app or something called downtime. 
Yeah, that's how um, you use that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah that's, so it, that's that's a little hack we should talk about actually that I've talked about in the past with NaNoWriMo and other writing things as well. Um, it's I think on Mac only, but there are probably other similar apps. That yeah, you I can think get. there's actually like an app that you can get I've yeah. heard of that you can install onto pretty much any the device. one in Mac that's like in the actual settings it limits your it, you can basically like lock every single thing on your computer and not and stop it from working except whatever you choose not to so oh, if wow. you choose like Scrivener I usually do Scrivener and Spotify I keep unlocked everything else is like can't use it right and that's really helpful for eliminating distractions even those moments where you want to research something or like you want to look something up for your story, but then you start getting distracted, like reading articles and then watching related videos, and then suddenly you're totally distracted. Um, so it really helps with that. Um, and if you find that you're in the middle of writing something and you're like, well, I need to research it, you can always put a note to yourself and say, research this later. Or if you just have a random idea that you want to research or look up something, make a note to yourself and you'll be surprised by how at the end of the day, this list of notes actually doesn't really matter that much to you anymore. Right. <laughs> like you actually don't have that much interest in even knowing these things anymore. But if it's for your book, you can always research that later. And a lot of times we don't need to drop everything and research something right yeah. then. Sometimes that's a yeah. little bit of a mini excuse in yes. our subconscious. Exactly. And then we're on YouTube and, oh, look, one of the YouTubers I like uploaded something. And then we're listening to that. And then 20 minutes have gone by. Exactly. Yeah. So it's important to catch yourself. Or if you don't want to completely lock yourself out of the internet and all your apps and stuff, you can utilize something like writing sprints, which if you are familiar with my Write With Me live streams that I do every month, I do um, writing sprints in those live streams. And it's the most common one is 25 minutes on, five minutes off. You've probably seen them all over the place for studying, doing any kind of work, um, especially a lot of mental creative thinking type work. Um, It's really helpful because it helps you to focus for a small window of time and then give yourself a break so that you're not pushing yourself too hard, just like constantly (laughs) zeroed in on this task can be mentally taxing. So it's important to give yourself little breaks, especially for your your eyes, for eye strain Um, and just for mental strain as well. So I find that writing sprints of the, the 25 minute, five minutes is really helpful for focusing which is another way to eliminate distractions and get into flow or at least invite a state of flow into your day. Um, And it's also helpful if you have external distractions, like people coming into the room, trying to talk to you, family members, whatever the case may be, you can have a timer and see, maybe even show the person in question your timer and be like, I only have eight minutes left. Can I talk to you then? And you can remain in that concentrated state rather than having your attention broken over and over and over again, which as we know, um, as we've talked about before on the podcast, when you are distracted, it takes your brain about 23 minutes roughly to refocus completely like you were before you got interrupted, which is valuable writing time. The 20, 23 minutes of writing time is like a lot of words that you could have written, you know? Yeah, it definitely is. So it's all of those little things add up. Yeah, I think to writing a more a faster first draft because you are more likely to achieve a flow state if you're not distracted. Yeah, absolutely. And finding what triggers you into that flow and preparing those things ahead of time, which we were talking about this a little bit earlier. Yeah. Another thing that can be wonderful is to figure out what are the things that trigger flow for you. For me, playlists and music definitely get me into a state of flow. I have curated playlists and Abby does too. Abby has some of the most intensely curated playlists I have ever seen in my life. I'm a little obsessed. Like I I (laughs) thought I was pretty meticulous with my playlists, but then when I go and look at Abby's playlists, I'm like, no, this is my playlists are child's play but <laughs> your I, playlists are good i man. have i have like playlists for each book that i'm writing and the music as soon as i start the playlist it's like ooh, i want to write that mm. story you know it gets yeah. me in the mood pretty much instantly and it, i can put on i i love using headphones instead of earbuds and this, that's just me because it's almost like how it like covers your ears it like puts you in like this little 
cave. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's it's like a just, bubble. That might just be me, but it, for I'll me, it, it feels like the headphones go on and I enter the bubble, I enter the zone, yeah. and I can just be totally in that little writing cave yeah and let my inspiration start flowing so usually for me a playlist will help and if you have that curated ahead of time that can be really helpful it can be a very helpful tool to mentally bring you to that place of being like oh i want to create yes you know what i mean exactly. and i think doing that ahead of time so you don't have to go fishing around in your computer for what music you want to listen to you already have it right there set up ready to go it eliminates all that time of having to kind of poke around and see what you want to listen to having those things ready in your writing space can be a very great tool yeah totally i agree um, also atmospheres, atmospheric soundscapes are also really helpful. Sometimes. I feel like you do more of that than me. Yeah. I, sometimes I like completely forget to do it and then I'm like, oh, I should have done that. But, <laughs> but I like get distracted just by the writing process, which I guess is a good thing. It's always a good thing to get distracted by. <laughs> but right. yeah, especially like pairing music with the soundscape can be really nice. Um, I guess ambient was the word I was looking for. Ambient soundscapes, but atmospheric works too. Um, <laughs> can be really, really helpful. I did a lot when a lot of that when I was writing the Lighthouse book, because there was like a lot of scenes with like a rain and distant thunderstorm and like ocean sounds, and so like all those sounds layered in with the music I was listening to is like so. It was like going into that other, you know, that bubble, like you were saying. That's cool. Which is a great way to get into flow is to create that bubble and understand like what is it that makes that bubble for me? Maybe it's playlists, maybe it's soundscapes, maybe it's, um, you know, having your, another thing that I think helps us both is aesthetic boards yeah. and having your aesthetic board nearby that you can, you know, not get distracted adding to it <laughs> too much, but be able to look at it. And whether you have boards for different characters will help you to just get visual inspiration very quickly, I find. It's yeah. like very, very quickly, quicker than like trying to, you know, I don't even know another example, <laughs> but, yeah. but some other ways of like developing your characters and like, yeah, you should have all your characters developed and stuff before you start the writing process. But um, I find that visual aesthetics are really good for like fast inspiration paired with music can be just like really powerful right for like quick inspiration and yeah, so i agree 100 percent um yeah so playlists and soundscapes are all are both wonderful things for getting into your creative bubble and those are more creative things so definitely like pay attention to what are the creative things that get you inspired and when i say pay attention to it I mean, like, observe your best writing days where it was just, like, effortlessly flowing. And there might be, like, more more ingredients to this. It might be that it was just a really great day in some other ways. <laughs> it might be that um, you got a lot of work done the previous week. Or it might be that there were actual physical triggers that you can repeat. There might be an actual pattern. There might be a recipe, give or take a few ingredients, to creating that state of flow for your writing right. and so paying attention to those ingredients helps you to like repeat the process um so definitely notice when you have a really good writing day well what was it you did ahead of time for me one of those things that usually is like every single time i do this is i don't and we've talked about this many times i don't let too much um input into my brain mm -hmm. in the morning before i write I try to just get up and get to writing if I possibly, like as soon as I possibly can, if that is available to me that day. And I find that is so much more, there's so much more clarity to be found there Yeah. than, um, you know, letting, letting yourself absorb a yeah. ton of other things yes. before you get to your creative time. Yeah. Exactly. And for everyone I think it'll be different when they feel the most creative. I think find what that time is for you and then don't let a lot of things get in the way. So even if that's evening, 
evening can be kind of a tricky time because as the day starts to wind down, that's when a lot of us watch TV or do other types of maybe mindless, more mindless activities and things. And then that time slowly ebbs away and then we're tired and it's time to go to bed. You know what I mean? So if you find, hey, no, I'm really creative this time of day. I love writing at night. Then come up with a evening routine that can be just as effective as us morning writers where you really respect that time and get yourself into that creative flow so that you can write and utilize that time as best as you possibly can without like loading so much other information and put into your brain before you let yourself write. And I'm the same exact way. I like to write in the morning and I don't like to do hardly anything else before I get into the writing process. I try to make that pretty much almost the first thing I do in the morning. Um, So I think avoiding some of that mental clutter can be a huge tool for keeping mental clarity, having a sense of mental clarity so that you can then write much better. Yeah. Yes, very true. I find the same thing. And for like other physical habits that I find really inspiring, helpful, and to create like a more orderly, efficient writing process is to just simply prepare things ahead of time. Prepare physical things that you know you will need ahead of time, whether that is a clean workspace, an organized workspace to write in, or whatever meals you're going to be eating that day. Meal prep is a huge time saver. If you can do that ahead of time, that is really helpful. Um, Cleaning up your space and creating a organized place that you can write in even if you don't have like losing my voice even if you don't have like a specific writing nook or writing space even if it's just like a place that you you enjoy writing in okay it's going to be way more inviting to write and way more inspiring to write in that place if it is clean and orderly because an orderly space leads to an orderly mind I firmly believe that I've I found that to be so true in my own life no matter what I'm working on and a little bit goes a long way Um, Same with like meal prep. Okay, if you're going to be distracted thinking about, okay, I have to make myself food. What what am I going to be eating? I don't know. And that's wasted time. That's time that you could have spent writing. So if you prepare your meals ahead of time, prepare anything that you possibly can ahead of time for like your physical well-being. Okay, Um, even like scheduling breaks and stuff into your calendar so that you know, okay, after I write for two hours, whether I'm doing like four writing sprints, whatever, on the fourth writing sprint is a good time to take like a longer break. Maybe go for a walk, get some fresh air or eat something or whatever and organize your schedule as well as your physical space. That is going to be very helpful if you are trying to get as many words in every day as po- as you possibly can. Um, another thing that has really helped me that I continue to do for like every single writing project is preparing what I call source material ahead of time. And I talked about this in my Write Faster video that I posted last Preptober or last November. Um, But this is something that I haven't heard a lot of writers talk about, (laughs) but it's helped me so, so much. And of course, it depends on what kind of writer you are, because this might not apply to every writer. But if you get specific, clear ideas that pop into your head at a inopportune moment, as in a moment where you can't, you're not writing and you're like at work or you're cleaning your house or doing something else and you can't just drop everything and start writing, try to write down those ideas if you can and save them somewhere. Save them in your Scrivener project. Even if they're messy, even if it's just like a piece of dialogue, for me so much it's dialogue that it will be like my characters start talking and I have to write down what they're saying to each other because I know, oh, I'm going to use this dialogue sometime, even if I'm not quite sure what context the scene is going to be in um, or where the scene is going to appear. It helps me so much to have those pieces of source material written out ahead of time and then I can copy and paste them, <laughs> which is like one of one of the wonderful things to do when you are um, trying to get those words in. Okay, if you if you wrote some dialogue for a future scene that's going to happen like in the future, okay, it doesn't count to your um, word count today, but it's going to count to your word count when you actually put that put that bit of dialogue into your 
first draft. So that can also be really heartening. <laughs> right. Yeah. When you reach that scene, you're like, oh, I have dialogue already written for this. Copy, paste, add some tags. It's also really helpful, I find, for... That must um, be such a pleasant surprise when you're like, oh, I have dialogue already written. I've never done yeah. that. Never once done that. Oh my that. gosh. That always I can't imagine me. not doing I, that. I write in a very linear way, and that's what I found has just always worked for me. Yeah. Um, so it really depends on, you know, your writing methods. Right. It depends mm-hmm. on your writing methods, but that's really cool. And yeah. I think it's important to write when the inspiration hits you. Mm. So yeah. um, if you feel inspired for something in a future scene, there's absolutely no harm whatsoever in just letting yourself write that and get those words out yeah. because it might not necessarily come back to you in the same exact way. Yeah. And that being said, don't feel like you have to fit into a particular other writer's um, like writing methods or writing style. Like you might be a non-linear writer and you don't even know it. You've just yeah. been writing linearly this whole time because you think you can't write non-linearly. So right. it's definitely worth exploring. Yeah. You know? Try different things. There's no rules. Yeah. There really isn't. Totally. It's it's an art form. So explore what works for you and what jives best with your own creative flow. I think that's really important to try different things and see what works best for your creative process. Yeah. And another thing that's like kind of more of a psychological thing that I've found has helped me with writing faster is to kind of reverse psychology this writing faster thing (laughs) the more you tell yourself you have to write faster the more you can't write faster (laughs) at least that's what I've found is like the more I'm pressured and panicking about I'm not writing fast enough the more I am like just kind of frozen and blocked and feeling like Because you're putting too much pressure on yourself. Yeah, yeah, it's too much pressure. Like, take the pressure off. I find that when I take the pressure off, it's like so much easier to write. It's so much easier to be creative. It's so much easier to chase those butterflies of creativity that I talked about in a couple episodes ago. It's easier to get into flow, and flow is where you want to be. Okay, you don't you don't want to be achieving, or rather, you don't want to be trying to achieve a state of. I can crank out, you know, X amount of words every hour, you would rather be in a state of flow, right? Where you actually feel creatively inspired and you're actually doing your best work and you're producing something really high quality without rushing, without panicking, without feeling anxious about it. So that's something that I have learned to tell myself when I feel that I'm on a deadline and I feel a bit rushed or stressed maybe about the deadline or how many words I need to write before I get to the deadline. And I try to just take a step back and take a deep breath and tell myself, there's no rush. There's no hurry. You can do this all day, even if I can't. (laughs) <laughs> like even if you can't do it all day tell yourself you can do it all day and you'll just be like okay chill this is good yeah. <laughs> we're good have fun exactly. you know i think that's another thing that people forget with NaNoWriMo is it's it starts to it sounds fun when you're like in preptober and you are planning and you're plotting and you're outlining and you're making your character aesthetic boards and it's really fun at that point but then November hits, you start writing, you start challenging yourself to hit this word count goal every single day. You miss a couple days. Oh my gosh, now I have to write like 4,000, 5,000 words today. And suddenly the pressure's on and it's no longer fun. Well, why did it stop being fun? Right. You know, and I think when you stop having fun, when you're being creative, your creativity suffers. You're missing an important element. Yeah, exactly. And I have found that when I find or rediscover, rather, rediscover the fun in what I'm doing, it's so much more creatively inspired. Yeah. It's so much more high quality too. Right, because there should be a playfulness to creating. Yeah, You know, It shouldn't be this laborious kind of miserable experience that we can tend to make it when we put way too many demands and way too much pressure on ourselves to perform at a certain standard. And it's important to realize every day is different. 
find what works for you and let go of that which is not serving you. And it doesn't have to match someone else's writing routine. It doesn't exactly. have to match the writing routine of, you know, some best-selling author in order to work. It's all about what works for you specifically. Yeah. Exactly. And everyone's journey is different. I can't stress that enough. Every single writer's journey is different. Yeah. So find what works for you. Find your own unique process. And next time you find yourself having a really good writing day, where you felt like you were in flow and the rest of the world just ceased to exist because you were in this fantastical fictional world of your own creation and it felt amazing, try to backtrack, reverse engineer that and see where did that come from? How did I get there? What was the What were the steps I took? What were the ingredients involved in creating that great writing day? And you might be surprised by how many of those ingredients are actually repeatable steps that you can take every day and maybe integrate into your morning or evening routine to better cultivate a state of effortless creativity. That's what it should really be, is effortless. Creativity should be effortless because when we are children, it is effortless. Mm. You know, children who create and come up with these great, unique ideas, you can tell they're not trying hard to do it. You know, it just spills out of them. They're not and like, I need to force myself to do this now. <laughs> that's what's so beautiful about yeah, it. Yeah, it just is you know? an overflow. Yeah, exactly. Of a state that they're already in, a lot of it. It's about what you're doing physically, mentally, spiritually to replenish and to put yourself in a place of joy, really. Yeah. That it stems back to. Yeah, exactly. So you have to take care of yourself too. And that's what we talked about last week, right? In last week's episode of like- Yeah. Um, you I, know, think, I think it was the episode b- before last week, okay. the cultivating a, a mindset for creativity. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Go check out that episode. It was very good. We talk a lot about um, ways to disconnect and reconnect with who you really are as a creative being so that you can maintain a healthy headspace for creating from a place of flow. Yeah. And that's such a cool thing to remember that you know we are creative beings and if we can just reconnect with that original source (laughs) we will find that creative flow and like you said a lot of these steps are repeatable it's not like some mystical muse that floats over your head and helps inspire you to write it these are steps that you can consciously make the decision to take they are repeatable and when you find that recipe that those steps that work for you, you can repeat those. You don't have to wait for your muse to come and decide to grace you with its presence. You can make conscious and aware decisions now towards creativity. Exactly. Mic drop. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We hope you guys enjoyed this episode and got some value out of it. If you did, share it with a friend who might also need some of this advice. And um, definitely hit the like button if you're on YouTube or give us a nice rating if you're on on, on another podcast platform. (laughs) We always appreciate your ratings and your comments mean so much to us. Thank you again to our amazing patrons who make this show possible. If you get value out of this podcast, go to Patreon dot com slash the kate and abby show and help us keep this podcast alive and free of interruptions until next week stay stoked and rock on